Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to JOD Trader's Tea Time with me, that is Owen Charles, because today is the 16th, uh, 16th of April uh, 2020. So, yep, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, also just before we jump in, uh, let's quickly, uh, well, quick mentioning of our JFD um, YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we update as well on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top, guys. So. Yep, uh, and you'll, you can have a look at these uh, different analyses that we do on a daily basis. So, um, now then, a uh, quick update on what's happening here. Just to let me refresh this page. Uh, the, the, the number that you saw there, there was the United States. So, um, yeah, uh, now let's, he let's have a look what's happening here globally. Okay, so the number continues to rise, and of course the the amount of deaths also continue to rise. Now, here, just to kind of uh, let you know that, for example, uh, here where the total deaths table is, um, although we have the Italy here as on in first place, uh, this is a little bit, I would say, incorrect uh, because if you click on U.S. Um, you will see that the total amount of deaths is uh, around, well, 31,000 in the U.S. So basically, the United States are leading the way in terms of total uh, deaths. Um, so, yep, guys, uh, for now, uh, yep, let's continue observing this. Um, let's see how everything's going to, how everything continues to develop. But, yeah, this number continues to grow. Um, now then. Uh, jumping into indices here, um, this is what I talked about this morning and uh, when I was looking at uh, the German DAX here, what I was saying that as long as this upside, as long as this upside line remains intact, this upside line taken from the low of the 19th of March, as long as it remains intact, we could continue targeting the upside. So for now, you can see that the um, that the index is still balancing above it. However, it's uh, although it's slightly in the positive territory, um, it still is not far from this upside line. So basically, for now, we cannot really do anything. For now, we're just observing this one. If we get a push above this. Uh, the current highest point of this week, which is around the 10,820 10, 10, zone, then yes, we will aim for some higher levels for until then. Uh, even if it continues to trade above this upside line, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels, we need to see that break because after a break of this one, uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep, uh, a, a push higher could be possible. For now, we're just uh, probably a little bit more on the neutral side. Uh, even with the downside, we need to see a, not only a break of this upside line, but also a drop below, back below that psychological 10,000 territory. So yep, keep your eyes on that one. Um, so the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I looked at this one recently, and uh, basically the index um, the index also remains above this upside support line, so good news for the buyers. Um, however, yesterday we saw a bit of a decline here, uh, but yep, uh, like I said, still the, the, the bulls are quite happy because the price remains above the upside support line. However, similar story as with the German DAX, we need to see a push above the uh, this little barrier here around the uh, 24,010 zone, or in a way we could take this high, the high of uh, the 14th of April, the, or should I say the current highest point of this week, which is around the 24,040 zone. So a nice good pop above this could, you know, uh, would first of all uh, confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, more buyers could be joining in here. So that's why 
will wait for a push above this barrier before kind of targeting higher levels. Uh, again, the same story, We're, we will remain a little bit on the neutral side right now, because even with the downside, we would need to see not only a break of this upside line, but also a drop below the uh, 22,595 zone. So keep your eyes on these two levels, guys. Uh, WTI oil. So quick update on this one. Um, now, yesterday, as I mentioned this morning, yesterday we had a drop uh, below that psychological 20 territory, but it didn't close below it. So today we have seen a move lower, uh, but it still remains. You can see now the price is back above that uh, psychological 20 zone, and it still remains above uh, above this territory now. Unless something happens today, uh, probably it, it, it will end up uh, the day somewhere around here. Um, but of course, keep your eyes on tomorrow's trading activity. Um, we'll see how um, how everything gets along. Now, um, let me just quickly double check the calendar. Um, so. Uh, yeah, so basically um, the suggestion is probably wait this one out guys for now don't really uh do anything we need to see in order to get comfortable with slightly higher levels we would like to see a push back above the 26.08 zone and i've mentioned this one previously that's basically the lowest point of 2016 guys so this one's right here so that's for us to get a little bit more excited about higher levels uh but even then let's not forget that um the upside might get limited near this downside line taken from the high of the 8th of january so um so but again given that we've, we're closer to the uh to this 20 mark um well all eyes are on that 20 mark because if by any chance we get a close below this then well i mean this could lead to some further decline so keep your eyes on that one uh gold so this gold is pushing higher after yesterday's decline a nice push uh, lower yesterday we had um it got a hold up near this territory this highlighted area i talked about this one this is the highest point of march um previously was the highest point of this year but now we managed to create a new high for this year near the 1747 mark and uh yep after yesterday's decline after yesterday's little correction gold is today pushing back to the upside here however it's still a bit far from the, um, the the current highest point of this week near the 1747 mark so uh, keep your eyes on that one uh, it's going to be quite interesting for now of course yes as long as it remains above this short-term upside support line taken from the low the 20th of march we will continue targeting the upside however once this gets broken then this is where we might change our short-term outlook to a more bearish one so that's why guys for now uh be very careful um in a way the further it moves kind of higher and more to the right uh we can actually now start considering the downside if we get a drop below the uh, 1703 territory somewhere around here which is the highest point of march and then yep we could uh aim for lower levels um then we could maybe aim for this one right here or even going further down a little bit down the line uh, we could start uh, maybe uh, let me just adjust this there we go or we could even go further down towards this upside support line uh, taken from the low of the 21st of May 2019 so keep your eyes on this one for now guys uh, yes we are leaning more towards the upside however don't get me wrong we are a little bit overstretched here to the upside so uh yeah so for now be very careful with this one um ripple ripple is uh rebounding from this territory i talked about this one recently basically guys and uh at this level here the 0 0.1760 kind of acted as a good area of support as it did back here in december 2019 basically being the lowest point of december 2019 and as you can see the crypto is now uh, pushing higher or at least trying to push higher um, we're not going to do anything here yet because for us to get excited about uh, some upside, further upside, we need to see a push above the current highest point of April, which is around the 0 0.2052, 53 mark, somewhere around here. And then we could aim for, for further upside. For now, we're just, uh, we will remain neutral and just continue observing the price action. We need to see a clear break through one of the highlighted areas before considering a further directional move. A further short-term directional move um 
ADJPY. Now I looked at this one recently, and basically what I was, uh, and I looked at this one this week. Uh, what I was saying that if we get a, well, actually not this week. Last week I was talking about this one. When what I was saying that um, if we get a nice push above this highlighted resistance area here, we could see this one traveling further north. Um, the idea initially was that we may get a move towards all, all the way here towards this upside support, or sorry, downside resistance line taken from the high of the 16th of January. Um, however. Um, you can see that the pair traveled a little bit higher, uh, found resistance near the 69.27 level uh, this week and uh, reversed yesterday sharply to the downside. That said, it still remained above this highlighted territory. So basically this previous area of resistance acted now as a fantastic area of support. So in a way how we can interpret this is basically for now it's, you can see that the bulls are not really giving up that easily um, for us to let's say aim for maybe for lower levels what we would need to see here and uh, in a way you could draw a few of the upside lines here now uh, both of these ups so what i'm talking about here is this one right here and of course uh, this little one right here. So again, uh, don't get me wrong, both of these lines are tentative. So that's why we would prefer to see if we, if to examine the downside, to get a little bit more comfortable with lower levels, uh, ideally we would prefer to see maybe a drop somewhere around here below this 64.92 zone, and then maybe consider further declines. Again, all this territory here would be a little bit of a tricky one because it could drift a little bit lower, find, find some support somewhere around here maybe let me just put this level somewhere maybe um around the this territory um there we go and uh then rebound and basically push out uh, push higher again so that's why i we don't i don't really like these situations here where um, it's really unclear, so that's why we'll just continue observing this. We'll remove all these upside all these upside lines because, again, uh, for now they're just going to be in the way. Uh, mainly, what we'll focus on are the support and resistance levels, and uh, first to be uh, to to first one to consider as the area here uh, between the 67.37 and the 67.70 mark. So we'll keep an eye on this one. If this all this territory holds, we could see a nice rebound and a push higher uh, but if it fails then yep we could see a bit of a drift lower here uh, that said to get a little bit more comfortable with the downside further declines a drop below the uh, 64.92 level would be required now in terms of the upside if it if it pushes a little bit higher here and breaks above the 69.27 zone which is the current highest point of of this week then yes we could get a little bit more comfortable with some upside but only up until this downside line so yep some again that's why it's a little bit of a tricky situation here guys uh that's why we're going to mainly focus on some uh some support and resistance levels the ones that i just mentioned uh, NZD cat. So uh, this one is a little bit more to the downside, and not not because of the, uh, let's say. Um, not because of the stronger Canadian dollar is more of a uh, weakness of the New Zealand uh, New Zealand dollar. So basically, we are seeing a, a break of this short-term tentative upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March uh, yesterday. Although yesterday's the daily candle managed to stay above this, but it kind of ended the day um, on the on top of this, uh, or seriously, bang on on this upside line. Um, and basically today, when the new candle Candle opened it kind of opened outside so basically that's why it's kind of uh, well that it's that's why probably a lot of uh, technical bears saw this one as a uh, as a good scenario to enter a good, a good opportunity to enter um, the pair for now remains very careful we, we I should say we remain very careful with the pair because, again, uh, don't get me wrong, this may drift a little bit lower here, uh, but if there is still no decent kind of uh, bearish activity somewhere around here, then this could reverse and push back towards this downside line. And let me just remind you of this downside line. This one's taken from the, uh, the highest point of March 2019. So basically this... Um, 
even more of a medium term well medium term upsides uh, downsides resistance lines here is kind of playing uh, playing out nicely so that's why this this a touch of this downside line could be something that we could see soon uh, so that's why we will remain very careful and cautious uh, with both of the both scenarios here for us basically long story short for us to consider uh, lower levels we would like to see a drop below the 0 0.8264 mark here and then target uh, slow target lower levels until then all this territory will be somewhat of a neutral one for us because this could drift a little bit lower maybe it could even uh, let me just put this one on the chart just as something for you to kind of keep in mind maybe it could even start uh, forming uh, somewhat of a uh, triangle pattern here and um, it could basically be something like uh, this there we go um, so, and again, this is just a, a bit of speculation here in order to kind of to justify the fact that why we are going to be a little bit more on the uh, cautious side here. So, uh, in a way, as I said, this could drift a little bit lower here. It could, as I said previously, it could find some support somewhere around here and then reverse back to the downs, uh, to the upside, uh, could start coiling up here and then maybe push through the upper side. So we've seen something like this happening a few times so that's why we would prefer to wait for a drop uh, below this little territory here the 0 0.8264 before considering lower levels and in terms of the upside um, now first of all let's get rid of this upside line we no longer need it um, we will keep this idea for now to be honest I mean we'll refer to this later uh, just to see if actually this is going to work out or not but um, if it pushes above th this this little downside line I would say then yes we could maybe consider a bit of a, a climb here a push higher towards this uh, medium term downside line which I've mentioned earlier uh, quick mentioning of USD JPY so this is a very interesting one as well yesterday it tried to make its way higher but failed to overcome this downside line today it did overcome the upside the downside line but still you can see the bears pushed the pair back down and this is for now kind of working out nicely as a as a as this descending triangle the one that i was talking about from the beginning of this week um, so it's working out nicely for now um, and if the pair remains below this downside line then there is a good chance for this one to drift lower however we need that confirmation drop below the 100 106.92 territory here which previously which recently actually acted as a good area of support so uh, a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, the next potential good area of, of support could be seen around the 105.12 territory which is the low of the 16th of March so keep your eyes on that one um, in terms of the upside um, well we are taking here a very conservative approach and uh, of course we will wait for a push above the 108.58 territory that this is from where we would uh, probably start considering uh, higher levels but to get a little bit more comfortable with higher levels we need to see a break above this barrier here the 109.38 zone and then yep we could aim for uh, for further acceleration to the upside uh, GBP USD so quick update on this one uh, yesterday we dropped below this level and I was telling you guys to keep an eye on this one because if we get a close below this and if we did get a daily close below the 1.2485 then this could lead to some lower levels but if we stay above this there is still a chance for the bulls to step in and drive this one higher as you can see the, today uh, the pair did drift again below this territory but it was quickly pushed it didn't even reach the low of yesterday it was quickly pushed back above this territory above this 1.2485 and uh, basically now uh, it's kind of hanging around here and to be honest we're just um, monitoring this one right now we just want to see if, if this area continues to hold because if this 1.24 85 area continues to hold and well I mean this could rever quickly reverse uh, GBP USD back to the upside here and we could see uh, the rate kind of accelerating maybe even all the way towards this our, our initial main target near the 1.2726 which is the lowest point of February this year and uh, also coincides with the 200 EMA here on the daily chart and uh, Euro USD finally so um, for this one, of course, we need to jump into a four hour chart. And uh, here you can see that the upside support line continues to hold. So 
the same story I'm not gonna uh, talk about this one too much because I've talked uh, basically it hasn't it hasn't moved much f since this morning and uh, it the same idea remains as I've mentioned uh, re uh, recently in my in my recent videos so in order for us to uh, get excited with the downside we need to see a drop below this 1.0777 zone because that's the lowest point of February of this year and then yep further declines could be possible if we get a break of this one in a way if in terms of the upside well uh, we would still like to see a push back above the 1.09 uh, 52 53 zone here uh, because this would also place the rate back above the 200 EMA on the four hour chart and maybe more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in and drive the pair higher initially we'll target the 1.1039 but then maybe it could travel all the way here towards the 1.1147 zone which is the high of the uh, 27th of March again it's a very interesting spot right now. Um, the only thing is that we will remain neutral and uh, we, we need to wait for that confirmation break through one of these highlighted areas before considering a further short-term directional move. So guys, I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time. And uh, if you want to join me tomorrow morning, uh, as well if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning actually uh, find it somewhere around uh, 6 o'clock GMT time maybe a little bit after that uh, where we're gonna have a, a look at some of these instruments some new ones and uh, yeah we'll take it from there guys basically so I really appreciate your time guys thank you very much stay safe both uh, financially and uh, health wise as well and uh, yep let's like I said see you tomorrow thank you very much and bye bye